All right, time to get spooky this week because we're taking a look at Ghost House. Also known as La Casa 3, it's a 1988 Italian supernatural horror film directed by Umberto Lenzi, who you might remember for directing Eaten Alive from episode 9. It stars one of my all-time favourites, Donald O'Brien, who is best known for playing Dr. Obrero in The Incredible Zombie Holocaust, which we covered in the Dead of Night collection. I'll put a link to that there or something. So it was made to cash in on the Evil Dead films, and it did pretty well in its own country, and a sequel was spawned a couple years later, starring Linda Blair from The Exorcist. It's trashy, and it's stupid, and it's my kind of film. So the plot follows a guy who hears a distressing message on his ham radio, so he and his girlfriend set out to see what's what. Along the way they bump into some youngsters who were camping outside this big house, and surprise surprise, the house turns out to be haunted. It really throws a lot at you from the get-go. A haunted house, possessed clown doll, a crazy killer, weird singing and chanting, and a hell of a lot of strange dialogue. Sadly, none of these things are really fleshed out, but we get some great scenes along the way. The dialogue is really fascinating. It's sort of dreamlike and disjointed, but definitely not intentionally so. Okay, so it was my voice. And the scream sounded like my sister Tina. It doesn't make any sense though. I swear, I don't get it. I don't know. Then I heard that song. That stupid song. Was it like a children's nursery rhyme? Then you believe me? Oh, sure I believe you, of course. Oh, thank goodness. Everyone thinks I lie all the time, but I don't. I know. Now try and close your eyes and get some sleep, okay? Okay. Maybe there's something supernatural about all this, guys. I don't know. All I know are computers. <laughs> The acting generally falls into the entertainingly bad category, which is great. It makes the characters a lot more fun to watch. The practical effects, the camper, yet really well made. I'm liking things like the glass ballooning out and exploding, and the mirrors all warping. You can tell a lot of work went into it, and it really paid off. It makes for some really memorable scenes. I'm really digging the creepy clown as well, getting some real poltergeist vibes from it. And the music's great as well, some rocking 80s synth. weird bits for this film, outside of the writing and acting. Firstly, the film takes place for the most part in broad daylight, probably the sunniest day with like bright blue skies, which seems kind of counterintuitive when you're making a haunted house film. And tying into this, a lot of the film takes place away from the house, which is a massive shame because a lot of the best scenes are in the house. It could definitely have done with a few more haunting scenes, and it just kind of seems like a big missed opportunity. This might be one of the best prints we've had so far. It's clear, with no grain or scratches, an excellent example of a Vipco film. Maybe they're finally getting the hang of things. And on the disc, we get nothing new, but we do get everything again. At least they're consistently giving us everything. Now, 
This is one strange case. Firstly, it's laid out in columns like a newspaper. If that isn't weird enough, it's all very opinion based, saying that it's hugely enjoyable for Vipco fans, and describing one of the characters as having a face like a slapped arse, which just seems pretty mean really, and it's mad that this was printed on the back of a film. We also get a few errors, two examples of no spaces after a full stop, here and here. I do like the screenshots that they've used, but it just doesn't make up for how weirdly this whole thing reads. Such a strange, strange case. Overall then, I liked this one. It's not a perfect film, but I really enjoyed my time with it, and I'd say that it was better than the other Umberto Lenzi film that we've watched. There's a hell of a lot going on, and I'd definitely recommend it. I'd say it might be quite fun to watch with a group of friends. I'd even recommend this print, it was pretty damn good. And it's a good job really, because outside of this, there's nothing really in the UK. If you want a Blu-ray or an upgrade, you're gonna have to import, I'm afraid. So, decent one this week, and next week we're moving from ghosts to vampires. So we're gonna be taking a look at Grave of the Vampire.